Whew. It's getting nice out here. See this? No snow. But <laughs> oh, it's getting a little nerve wracking because we got a lot of work to do and we are not ready to start seeding. Spring planting is gonna begin in just a couple weeks and we are not ready. There's two big buds in there. They still need a lot of work done to them. There's still parts we're waiting on. There's a lot of stuff that we gotta do and I better get in there and stop talking out here. So today's video is brought to you by Simply Safe. I'm gonna go inside and uh, talk to leg arms and uh, we'll get a game plan figured out and hopefully get that seed in the ground when it's ready. A little update on this tractor. So the 525 Big Bud, inside the cab was a bunch of wires all over on the floor. And last fall, Case IH set this thing up with auto guidance so it can actually steer itself. Sweet. But there's a lot of wires everywhere. And we didn't get to cleaning it up and putting it where it needs to be because the steering sector took a crud on it, could steer it. So I went up there, did a little bit of messing around with the wires, cleaned it up a little bit, and then fixed a little bit of the cable issue with that adjust the hydraulic flow. That took a little bit too. I'm done with that for right now. What I need to do is come over here to the 600 bud. And my personal opinion on this, okay, understand my logic real quick. That air compressor on this motor needs to be replaced. I think it's all wore out. So what's happening is this motor is puking oil out of all sorts of seals, all over. It's leaky. And I think it's leaking from the air compressor pump into the engine, which is pressurizing in the engine and starting to push oil everywhere. Now the engine has breathers on it, but I think it's forcing too much air into this engine. Now it could be another thing. It could be blow by from the cylinders in this engine. Maybe this engine has got a weak cylinder and it's blow by inside. But the reason why I don't think it's blow by is inside the cab, when you pop your air brake, it releases all the air in the line, fills the cab with that excess air, and you smell this burnt oil smell. So that, to me, sounds like there's oil coming from the engine into your air compressor pump, which is leaking past your piston ring, and going into your air system and stinking it. So that being said, we're going to just change out the air compressor pump. Hopefully that fixes our issue. And uh, that means I need to take this thing off and get a remanufactured one. So understand that logic? Okay, good. All right. Now Cummins, they did a beautiful thing by putting a couple bolts right behind this air compressor that are very, very fun to access. And you truckers out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I don't have to say anything else, but I'll have my method of taking it apart. There's a special tool you can reach around and do it, but I don't feel like building a special tool and I don't feel like buying a special tool. I will take it off some other way. My suspicion is correct, I believe. If you look at the top, it's all nasty and oily inside there. Even the port out the side is oily. I think it's been puking engine oil into that and um, making a mess out of everything. This side now, let's pull it apart. I got seals, I'm missing one out of the three, but it's on its way. Might as well just take it apart and see what else I find. Yeah, it's okay. You'll be okay. It's like surgery. It's like breaking an arm. A little bit of resentment towards this tractor. Just a tiny bit. Oh, that was really painful. It's not good there. All right. This inside here has two coolers, one for the engine and one for the transmission. It uses the radiator coolant to cool all of the uh, oils. So oil circulates in the engine, goes through a little cooler, uses the radiator cooler or fluid to cool it. Same thing with the transmission. And the transmission builds up a lot of heat. So yeah, the gaskets around that hold the coolant in this are bad. So now I've got like 50 some bolts to take off. I don't know. But anyways, gotta remove these pieces here, remove all that, take that off, clean it all up and get ready to put the new gasket on.
This ain't fun. I'll be <laughs> Looks like uh, it's removed. That's good. Good, 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 good. I gotta split that open. That's your transmission coolers inside. And I gotta put a new gasket on that. And then this bad boy right here. This is for my engine. Isn't that cool? All right, well, I'm done for tonight. I made myself a delightful mess. And I think I'm good. I'm good. Nick, clean the shop, please. Got a minute to sit down in the office. I'm uh, building out our farm projected seating operation for 2022 through the FS Connect portal. So I'm just basically taking some of our spreadsheets here and putting in our spring wheat acres, our canola acres, our yellow pea acres, our barley acres, our winter wheat acres, and uh, possibly some other things. And that way at least we'll have a good idea. And then with the big bud setup with the AFS Connect Pro 700s, this will then be sent to the tractors. Well then we pull into the field, it'll already be ready to go and say, okay, yeah, we're mapping this crop in this location at this time. And then at the end of the seeding season, we should have a pretty good log of where we put the crops, what days we did it, and uh, hopefully take a lot of hassle off of, you know, when you're filing your crop report and you're like, what day did we plant that? Uh, I guess this sounds good. Yeah, so we'll see how this works. But anyways, take me a minute. Got a few uh, fields to go through. There's a bunch there, but we'll get it done. Years ago, my wife had this great idea of making a logo for our farm. It was before YouTube was even really a thing. And um, so she put together our logo that we have right here, as you can tell. And she made a couple hats. Well, actually Nick's wife, my wife, and my mom and sister and went together, got like 25 hats. And then they gave it to family members. And then Nick started wearing one of the hats on the channel. And you guys started asking for merchandise. Where can I get those hats? I want more hats. And then we started selling more and more and kind of just kept growing. And now we have a huge variety of different things that you can get different sweatshirts shirts hats patch hats and it's because of you guys you guys asked for this and i wanted to say thank you so much for supporting us thank you for buying our merchandise i haven't really said that before so thank you really appreciate that guys So I got a call from the surgeon. He looked at my MRI and uh, not only did I tear, partially tear my pec, I also tore my rotator cuff a little bit. So I got another surgeon that I'm gonna to be talking to in about a week and they're gonna do a more evaluation to see if surgery is recommended or not. So yeah, but I'm doing pretty good, honestly. So I'm gonna stop talking about my arm. You guys get it. <laughs> After changing that drop box or chain case or divider box, oil, um, started leaking really bad out of that seal, out of that rear drive lane going to the rear axle. So I pulled it apart. Of course, drained all that new oil I just put in it. And then um, found out that the seal is definitely shot. The speedy sleeve was definitely toast. There's the old groove on the yoke. All right, now that we got the right shaft for the accessory drive gear that runs the pumps on the Series 2 Big Bud, I gotta put the shaft back in the sprocket and it's just pressed in there. So I'm gonna use the rosebud torch and I'm gonna warm this baby up. This is the sprocket. Then I'm gonna go grab the shaft out of the freezer and see if I can slip it right in. So let's see if this works. If not, I'll take it to the press and press it on, but we'll try the heat and cold method first. spinning on it. That's how much that thing expanded. So that frozen shaft and then expanded heat of the sprocket. And in a second, oh, it's already fused up. There we go, it's already tight. I could spin it on it. Well, that beats having to put some pressure on it. Cool. All right, let's keep assembling it.
It's quiet. Everyone must have went in for lunch. Let's go in the office and talk Simply Safe. This here is a Simply Safe system. It's a 24-7 system that protects your property as well as yourself. This is the base station, so if you need to arm it, Please exit now. Just a simple button on your keypad. Alarm off. This talks to all the sensors, which are all right here. So we've got like a smoke detector, carbon monoxide detector, your deadbolt, so that way you can either unlock or lock your property remotely, you can. You've got your temperature detector, your sound detector, this is for glass, so if someone smashes the window, it'll pick up the frequency and alert authorities. Your motion detector, that one's obvious, movement. These are really important. These are your door jams, so that way if your windows and doors, as you open the door, it separates and then notifies the door is ajar, and then when it closes, it'll say the door is shut. So you can tell if your doors are open or closed from the app on your phone. Water detector in case you have flooding of instant. Your front camera for the doorbell, so if someone presses the doorbell button, it'll take a picture, show you who's there, who wants to come inside, and you can say yes, no, maybe. And then of course, you've got a panic button in case you're somewhere in your house alone and you don't like what's going on, you can press the button, authorities will then alert, and they'll call and get someone dispatched to help you out. So then we've got cameras. This one here in particular is new from Simply Safe. It's 1080p outdoor, wide angle, it has night vision, two-way audio communication, and it can go just about anywhere. Really simple magnetic mount, so you can just attach this to the side of your house, wherever you need to be, put the camera on, get the angle lined up, and boom, you're good to go. And as you see, I've conveniently placed this camera to spy on Lego because it's working because that's what brothers do, I think. And there's an indoor camera that's a little simpler than the outdoor camera. If you need it, it's available. Another really awesome thing is the app. Really simple to use. You can keep tabs on your whole system, whether it's your cameras or your sensors. It'll let you know if one of them's not working properly. You can do updates through it and contact Simply Safe if needed. Now you can save 20% on a system if you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Just visit simplysafe.com slash walkerfarms to learn more. All right. Get back to work. Okay, I'm doing some uh, modifications on our peak cleaner. We brought it in a while back. Um, we still have some more peas to clean, uh, but we'll wait for the weather to cooperate. We got some things going on, as you can see outside. Uh, it's good. Always like the moisture, but uh, what we did is uh, we took our single phase 220 motor and uh, we went ahead and got a three phase converter. Single phase to three phase, right here. And so we can now adjust the speed instead of just trying to uh, run the auger at the one rate of speed, which might be too fast, which is actually too fast when the gate's all the way open. So this way we can slow it down and just uh, adjust the speed so that uh, we do less cracking. So I got all that, uh, the three phase inverter back. I built a box back there for both of those. But anyway, so I'm gonna finish up uh, attaching the piano hinge that I have right here uh, to this plate. I've got the holes drilled, then I'll drill them into the uh, plexiglass. I've got to uh, put a guard there. So I'll put a guard here, protect uh, hands. Um, and so that's another one. Um, we've got some bearings to put here instead of these little bushings. You know, it was the old style furnace where they just had some uh, brass uh, bushings and you oil them ever so often. Well, we've got some self-centering one inch bearings right here. We'll fix uh, this area with the uh, self-centering bearing and that way we won't have to grease it. Uh, it'll, it'll run smooth. Uh, so we have that to do. Uh, and then uh, uh, exp expanded metal screen right here. So you can't stick your your hands in. So when we get all that done, I think we pretty much have got a lot of this tied up, um, and then we'll get back at uh, cleaning the rest of our peas. And you never know, we might try uh, some other crop, like uh, some barley. Uh, we might go ahead and run through, we clean up some of the barley that we grew last year that we want to see this year. So what I've got here is the drive line that goes from the divider box in the back of this bud. Remember that oil I changed that leaked out, but I decided I needed to fix the seal. The whole drive line goes to the back axle, took it off, and finally sourced the seals. So there's the seal for the yoke going into the divider box. You can see the original groove in this that uh, 
definitely needed a speedy sleeve. This is a speedy sleeve. It's basically a little cover that goes over this groove, which then sets a new surface area for that seal to ride on so it doesn't leak. The problem is, is this groove needs filled in. Um, leg arms had a good point. If I just put the speedy sleeve over this, eventually that seal will press in the speedy sleeve into that groove and it'll leak again and make a problem. So I gotta get some cold weld, some like, I don't know, JB weld, some type of uh, hardener that I can put in and I'll mix it up, smear it around that thing and then clean it down, buff it down, grind it down. Not grind it as much, but just get to the point where it's flush with the surface. That way there's some type of material in there so when the speedy sleeve is on there, it uh, doesn't compress as the seal rides around it. As you can see, it's pretty thin material. Then, this is the old seal. Uh, those dents are for me, taking it out. But here's the new seal. So that gets to go inside of this, which is the nut, tighten the bearings inside of the divider box. So I got a bunch of stuff here to put together. Um, so this is the universal in the very back, goes right to the back axle. This was the original. It doesn't turn at all. There's no movement in it. It's completely solid. This drive line does not twist or angle. It's just, it, well, it just spins, but there's no, there's no flex to it like this. So with that said, what happens is the needles over time eventually, because there's no movement, the grease doesn't move around in there, wear into the shafts and eventually it'll wear out. This could be the original. It could be 40 years old for all I know. So um, I decided to go ahead and put a new one in it while I'm in there. So we've got a new one here. This Universal, honestly, is in pretty good shape, but I may put a new one in there too. So when it's all said and done, it's probably gonna be about $500 in parts, but then that hole will be done and it won't be leaking and you shouldn't have to touch it for 40 years, right? So let's get to it. Well, I just finished pressing the seal into the nut. So I'm pretty sure I got it the right way. And I put some gasket filler inside between the two so that way there's nothing that can leak around between the seal and the, the nut. And then I filled in the gap on this with some cold weld, then took some gasket as well, gasket sealer, and put it around and then put the speedy sleeve on. So I think that's good to go. The universal's on the drive line. So now I just gotta start putting this back together again. I think I got the yoke on there right. The nut's tight and uh, the lock's in. And I put sealant, or I should say gasket sealer, all around all the threads on the spline of the shaft. So there shouldn't be any place for oil to leak past. All right, she's together. Thanks for leg arms help. We were able to muscle that drive line back up in there. I think it's heavy. Okay, yep. ready? Yep. Sure it's a good place to hook it. Okay. So. Set it down. They built those seats Extra heavy. Yeah. It's dirty. We'll wipe it down. 
Yep, definitely Some, dirt. Someone's butt was on that. <laughs> Just a thought. I didn't think about that until now. I'm sure glad we fixed that cable. Otherwise people would complain, leave comments about how our cable needs fixed immediately. Oh, they won't complain. They will never know. Don't scratch the bud. Yeah, because we don't have any scratches yet. At all. On this thing. I think it's pretty complex. Amazing. What goes on in your seat that you don't know about? So to get these seats to fit in there, this armrest here, which had all your controls on your Connect tractors and the Pro 1200 and everything is just too big. So he's taking it off like that. So that way you can put the seat in there and then come up with a new way for a new armrest because we don't need all the control. It'd be nice, but the way the bud's set up, it just isn't practical. So he's uh, making it work, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, sweet. He's excited about this. This is dad's seat. This is going on dad's tractor. That's dad's tractor, so. Gotta make it right for dad. And for the first time. Safety guys, safety. We can buckle up. I'm when excited. When we're going 14 and a half miles an hour down the road. 15, almost 16. So we're gonna have security cameras in there and like, dad, did you buckle up? Oh yeah. Did you buckle up? Yeah. I don't see your buckle. We should, oh, I should rig it up so it doesn't start until it's buckled. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Do it. That, he'll love that. Yeah, he will. Well, that's it for today. We're gonna take off tomorrow to go to a farm show down in, uh, New Orleans, never been there before, so that'll be interesting. So we'll get back and get to this work here when we get back to get to this work when we get back. There's a lot going on when we get back to get to the work. It needs to be done before spring planning starts. So anyways, we'll see you guys next time. God bless.